Good morning, everyone. Haven't all the talks been amazing? That was pretty good. We're going to get louder. So I always thought that happiness was something you earned, that when you had the perfect husband, the life, the, the meaningful job, that that was when happiness would show up. It never actually occurred to me that happiness might be more about how you be than what you do. That journey for me actually started in a context just like this, happiness and its causes in 2010. I'm in the audience, I'm on maternity leave from my job making sheets and towels for Sheridan. I've got a four month old in my arms and I'm shoving my boob in his mouth trying to keep him quiet during a speech and I'm on spa stage watching Barbara Fredrickson. And this woman is transfixing. She's this perfect blend of head and heart. She's talking about the neuroscience of positive emotions. And I was transfixed. And I thought, when I'd grow up, I'd love to be just a little bit more like her. Fast forward six months, and I'm back at work from maternity leave, and I'm diagnosed with breast cancer five days after I go back to work. And it's in that moment, I thought that having a a baby had been tough, quite frankly. But it was like this double slap to the head of cancer and this experience of not ever being able to feel like I could trust my body again. And despite all the wonderful help from family and friends, a really disorientating time. So my answer to that existential crisis that kind of emerged from that was to start to question, what am I doing? What, what is this all about? And part of that questioning led me to think, well, maybe... I could give myself a gift as part of this experience. And that maybe that could be just to pursue whatever it is that's going to make me happy. And of course, that meant whatever job was going to make me happy because I was in this doing state. So it was that sense of wanting to be able to find a way to make meaning. So I started to think, well, maybe I know I could be a doctor. I've met plenty of great doctors lately, I'd make a fantastic doctor. So I went to and spoke to the university and at the end of that week I thought, well, hang on, it's a long, it's a long study period. Psychology, I'd make a fantastic psychology, I'm great with people, psychology is going to be it. So enrol in a psych degree and then at the end of that week, I'm like, what is it about psychology? Research, I know, I'll do a PhD. And I suddenly found that in 12, career, 12 weeks I had 12 careers. I was completely losing my mind and completely miserable. And I had this sense that having almost died, which was never really on the cards, but it was melodramatic at the time, I still hadn't worked out what I wanted to do when I grew up. And it was in this moment that I suddenly had a wake-up call. And a, a really important moment for me where I walked into the oncology office to have a checkup, And this woman walked in who I'd been doing chemo with in, in my group. And she said to me, I need you to know that I've been re-diagnosed. And I thought, bugger me. I have been living still as if so far in the future. I might not have six years to finish a, a med degree. I've, maybe I've been focused on the wrong question. Maybe it's not about what I want to do, but maybe who do I want to be? And so in that moment, I started to think about, well, what are the habits that I want to have? So I decided the first habit that I wanted to try was to actually be present and maybe get down on the floor with my son and play for half an hour a day. And like, despite how high the washing pile or whatever was going on at work, just to be. The second was to be curious. What if I spent a bit of time each day just exploring things that really mattered to me? And the third was to start to meditate. So I go back to work and within um, a year I'm actually made redundant. And as a really interesting opportunity, I decided, well, what if I didn't take a new job? What if I let go of those labels I'd been thinking about and only worked with people I love doing things I enjoy and just experiment a little and see what shows up? And one of the things I did in the, sort of the finding people I love, I spoke to this guy and he said, well, you know, you can come work with me. I'm about to bring this guy up from Denmark, Rasmus Hookgaard. Do you know him? And he's doing this corporate mindfulness thing and do you know anything about that? And quite frankly, I didn't. But he could have said he was setting up a blue cheese factory and he met my criteria of someone I loved. I would be a blue cheese girl. So I head along to the training for this corporate mindfulness thing, not really knowing what I was getting myself in for. And I do the training. 
come home and they start to talk about you know, do, doing 10 minutes a day of this focused shamatha meditation. And so I'm doing that. And then I start to feel a bit calmer after a couple of weeks, which is interesting. And then my husband says to me, bless you, Steve, do you realise you're a bit easier to live with? <laughs> and I thought, that's funny, so are you. And then after a couple more months, a fellow board director says to me, what's going on with you? It's like you're suddenly smarter. And I'm like, that's weird. There must be something in this mindfulness thing. I mean, what it meant for me was it was like I was able to take a back seat on my brain, that I was able to watch this kind of craziness occur in front of me and still kind of just sit and respond to that rather than engaging and reacting all the time. And it was a real opportunity for me to start to grow up a bit. And so I was wondering, though, is there something about me, Jill Coots, that's just perfectly suited to mindfulness? Am I deeply special like I always was told by my mum that I was? So I thought, I need to check this out. I need to do a reality check. So we got some people together and we ran some experiments to see, run some programs and see what happened. And for those who did their 10 minutes a day, it was exactly the same result. More peace, more calm, more clarity, all of those benefits. And so it's been a wild ride. It's um, not been an easy ride, but this journey of 18 inches from my head to trying to pursue my heart a bit more often has meant that we've set up the um, company, The Potential Project in Australia with Rasen Sukgaard. I've ended up co-authoring a book with him called One Second Ahead, which is a terribly ironic book name for a mindfulness book, but about mental effectiveness at work. And so it's with extraordinary joy that I actually stand here today talking to you, thinking back to that moment six years ago, um, watching Barbara Fredrickson and thinking, while it was never the journey that I expected to have, actually, I've ended up in exactly the place that I was yearning to be. And I'm so incredibly grateful for that. Thank you.